evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I know you, you all heard about the flood, but you still came. That's pretty courageous. I want to welcome everybody who's watching online today. Uh, we have a special day for you today. I don't know how many of you know or you don't know, but Merch Community Church not only has a reach here in our community, in our metro Detroit area, in our neighborhood, but our church is reaching all the way out to Africa. All the way out to Africa. Yes. We're, we're helping with God's kingdom to go forward. Amen. This is why we're all here. And uh, our church has joined together with a church in Victor, called Victory Valley Chapel in Kumasi, Ghana. So that we can work together and accomplish God's call for us to send the gospel and to preach the gospel all, all around the world. So I am really honored today and uh, I have a great pleasure to welcome to our church my friend, my soldier, my friend, my soldier in arms. <laughs> In Christ, we're all soldiers, right? In, in, God's, in God's army. We have fought many battles together, Brother David. So, Dr. David Okai, please. Come on up. David, now, you love our church, don't you? And I know that you pray for it a lot. We are yes. Yeah, so we have a lot in common with, with your church there. We, we all have the same heart. We, we, we know that, that you know, our call in this world is to, to bring people to Christ. And you guys, your church is doing a lot of that work. And so we have done together with our church several outreaches in, in, in Ghana, right? And especially, you know, we did, we did outreach in your local area, you know, with many children. How many children were there that day? That day, over 264. 264 children that, that your church brought together and ministered to, right? And we provided uh, food. Food and clothes. And clothes. Yeah, so that was a great. Awesome. Yes, and then one day, one day you know, uh, Pastor David said, you know, uh, the, the area in Ghana, North Ghana, very difficult, very, very, very poor, right? Muslim dominated area. Right. And, and we thought, we said, wow, that would be great if we can do an outreach in North Ghana, right? Right. So you, you, you guys put a team together there in your church and you prayed and you fasted and you got ready. Right. And I think it was February 2020. Yes. Right? February, yes. Last February 20, last year, mm -hmm. yes. That you went there right before COVID hit. Yes. Me, about two weeks before. Two weeks before. I got knew what was going on, right? I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want you, if you could please, uh, tell us a little bit about that outreach in North Ghana and also about the church that started there as a result of that. Right. Amen? Right. God Thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Morning. I bring you greetings from my family, that is the Okai and the Opuni families in Ghana and the United States. I also bring you greetings from Victory Valley Chapel. That's the church that I serve as a pastor in Bukum, Kumasi. Everybody say hi. hi. Okay. I'm excited to be here. Brother John and I have been partnering as ministers of the gospel since 2006. That is uh, over 10 years ago, over a decade. And uh, uh, I love partnering with him. And the wife and the family, and uh, when he was in Brightmoor, I was with him. And when, when we were at uh, uh, the other place, that is, the, Ecclesia. yeah, Ecclesia, I was also with you. And uh, I'm excited to be here in Merge Community Church. Though this is my first time coming here meeting you, but I, 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 I always have you in focus because uh, iron sharpens iron. God bless you. In February 2020, we planted a church in northern Ghana. Bandam Kwanta is a predominantly Muslim area. But prior to that, I lived with Pastor John 
So I went there, that is Bandangkwanta, with two of my uh, associates to do scouting with the possibility of planting a church over there. And uh, we came back after three days and uh, we moved a team, prayer warriors, to Bandangkwanta for about five days. We did a, a, a miracle crusade, that's a gospel crusade, for three days. And at the end of the crusade, the Lord was able to win in the power of his spirit 16 people. Is that awesome? 16 people. Muslim dominated area winning 16 people is a credit and honor to God, the King of glory. Because the power of the Holy Spirit was at work. Amazing supernatural happenings. So 26th of February, planted the church. Then I came back to Kumasi. I'm planning to go there in September this year. But when we went there, we didn't go to preach only the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we shared clothes, we shared food, and also medication with the people. You can even see from the slide. These people, they had serious sores in their bodies, and uh, the medical team took care of them. And we were excited to bring all these uh, pictures to your attention to enable you see what God is doing through you and through me and others in Ghana. I'm excited that Merge Community Church is a missionary church. Merge Community Church is not a monument, but it's a thriving church. I thank God that it says, come like fire, come like flood. So the fire comes in the flood way. That is enormity, enormous fire, igniting and consuming works of the enemy, penetrating and prevailing over works of the enemy, condemning plans of the enemy. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is very confrontational. It has power. Romans 1.16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. First the Jews and the Gentiles. And in this, God revealed his righteousness from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So the work you've done, though you've not stepped in Africa, in Ghana, but you are a fragrance in the annals of God's kingdom in Bandangkwanta. All of them say hello to you. They appreciate you. They're looking forward to see you come for mission trip to Ghana. You've been going to South America. Come to Africa also for mission trip. Okay. So, uh, God has a unique message for this church, and we want to see it manifested. Incubation, when a woman is pregnant, there should be a time that the woman should give birth. Because nobody can be pregnant for a thousand years. <laughs> and when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, there should be a radical change of life, a manifestation of power and authority and might of God. And this is why we are here and as a church. You remember that Jesus Christ says, I will build my church. And the gates of Israel shall not prevail over it. In mind, Jesus Christ foreknew the weaknesses of human beings. So he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, on the, on, the, on the road to Emmaus. God, the Son, opened their eyes and their minds to comprehend what they were talking about. They were just confused. And God opened their eyes and their minds and God told them, go and wait for my Father's promise. Go into that city and wait for my father's promise. Without that, I call it a prescribed catalyst for excellent ministry and life. Excellent Christian life and ministry knitted to Holy Spirit baptism. Yeah. Because without Holy Spirit baptism, we go wayward and we become monumental. Yeah. Yeah. And God doesn't want us to become monumental. He wants us to be vibrant and rich to the diaspora. Condemning plans of the enemy, annihilating darkness, and prevailing over works of the enemy. I thank God for Merge Community Church 
that this church is very vibrant. You see the gifts, see the gifts, manifestation of God's gifts in place. And you come in as a squad, as soldiers of the cross. Because the, the church is the only agent on this earth that is clothed with armor of God prevailing and trampling over scorpions and snakes and retrieving people, snatching people from the arena or the den of devastation and destruction. The enemy has come so many people in a camp destroying their lives. But God is counting on you, counting on you, counting on me to desire intentionally, not haphazardly, but intentionally, Holy Spirit baptism when we are clothed with power from on high. That is where we can reach out into the, uh, into the lion's den and bring the lost into the fold of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Proud to that, Jesus Christ breathed a breath of the Holy Spirit upon his disciples. That is post-resurrection appearance. When Jesus Christ resurrected, he revealed himself to disciples for 40 good days and 40 good nights. And he gave them the Spirit. He said, peace be unto you. Receive the Spirit. As the Father sent me, so I do send you. But why should Jesus Christ further in so the church to wait upon the Father's promise in dwelling of the Holy Spirit is born anew or born again. Then baptism imbued or endowed with supernatural power from on high is like spiritual armor, spiritual bulletproof. In, in the winter, Pastor John would take in coffee, hot coffee, he'd go into the belly, go into the stomach, still Pastor John have to put on thick clothes. Because coffee, only coffee can suffice. Winter, no. Unless you put on thick clothes. Winter jacket and all those stuff. Gloves. And sometimes even comforter before you can sleep. That is why Jesus said, in like manner, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, giving us new birth, then there is something more to cleave for. To desire intentionally. To desire, to covet. And that is the outpouring of God's Spirit upon us, which Pentecostals term it as Holy Spirit baptism. God is going to manifest Himself right now, but I want to touch on four secondary points. That is, when we receive, or when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, God enables us to become true worshipers. Worshipers. Then we become warriors. All start with W. Worshipers, warriors, witnesses, and winners. We know no defeat. We don't lose. The church does not lose any battle with the enemy. But the church is a winner. The church wins always. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, he enables us to do what human mind cannot comprehend or human mind can do. I was a summer. I was a halting speaker. A halting speaker. When I was a little boy, whenever I want to speak, I have to do something like this. Step before I can sleep, speak. But when the Holy Spirit came upon me, it changed my perspective. It changed my life. I was a coward. I was timid. It changed it. My perception was very wrong. But the Holy Spirit came as fire because John the Baptist says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That the one who comes, the one who is coming, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Yeah. Not Holy Spirit and cold water, yeah. but the Holy Spirit and fire. Yeah. So the fire comes like a flood. 
invading works of the enemy, invoking the power in the presence of the Holy Spirit, revoking the enemy's plan, revoking the enemy's plan and invoking God's power us to enable us to swim and flow in the dynamism. As we worship this awesome God, as we fight a good fight of faith as this warrior, as we witness Christ in soul winning, and as we emerge winners in God's kingdom, we are not losers. We are not losers. None of you is a loser. Don't ever have that negative mind that you are a loser. You are not a loser, but you are winners in God's kingdom. Somebody give praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And personally, I forgot, Med Community Church is, is also sponsoring me. Yes, yearly support. I forgot, when I, when, I, when I opened my iPad, I could see it. Yes, yes. So thank you for standing with me to do ministry over there in Ghana. When I was coming to States, uh, just last two weeks, some friends were telling me, so you are going to the U.S., why do, you, why do you want to come back? Why don't you choose to stay there? I said, no, I don't, I don't choose to stay there simply because I follow God's promptings and leadings. The Holy Spirit leads me in triumph and wherever he sends me, that is where I also go. That is my peace and joy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm American by naturalization, but I don't choose to live here because the Holy Spirit wants me to live in Ghana and touch lives in the diaspora. Yeah, yeah. That is my joy. And Major Community Church is sponsoring me yearly to do ministry over there. Why Holy Spirit baptism? This book will enable you it will, it will, it will, it will just open up, open up so many things, avenues for you. It's the spiritual arena. I sat with a woman on the train from Chicago to uh, an herbal last uh, three days ago, and uh, he got a copy of this book. Whenever, when he opened and he began to, she began to read. Say, no, what? What am I seeing? What am I? Am I dreaming? He says he's dreaming simply because he has never. She has, though he's a Christian, but she has never understood the Holy Spirit as this book unfolds. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will ignite fire. In her and you said because he bought three copies more. So he's going to give to his friends. And I thank God for that. That is my prayer. So it is Holy Spirit baptism. And why Holy Spirit baptism? Because we are engaged in warfare. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Jesus says, From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is taken by violence, and the violence taken by force. That means it's a war, it's a combat. Military term is a combat. It's friction. It's tension. It's not silver, it's taken by a silver platter. And it's a war. And if Jesus says this, he was looking forward to the day that his, he would, as he predicted in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. That time he had not built his church. The church was inaugurated in the book of Acts chapter 2. He built his church. And he had in mind that Without the Holy Spirit baptism, without the comforter, without the Father's promise, the Peter and others, they were just feeble people, human thinking, human ideologies, human mentality, and others. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be witnesses to me. I quote from page 22 of this book. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of Pharisees are not prevail over it. But he knows that the human flesh is so weak to survive the fiery, persistent, and aggressive assault of the arch enemy, that is Satan. To remedy this weakness of the human flesh, he commands the disciples to desperately covet the Holy Spirit baptism. Because human flesh cannot fight Satan and his cohorts. They 
They, they have experience in doing bad deeds. Experience in, in doing wicked deeds. So human flesh cannot engage that. The church is the visible armor of Jesus Christ engaged in spiritual warfare. It's spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is, has two dimensions or two components. Truth and counter. And power and counter. The biblical truth about the creator, he says, I, you are God, I am a man. You are sovereign. Yeah. Sing it that time. The biblical truth is that God is the creator of the universe. And we are part of creatures. Right. Biblical truth. Biblical truth of marriage. Biblical truth of sin. All these are very confrontational. It's, it's truth and counter. And they work hand in hand, truth and power. The truth is that God is God. And, and the power back in it is that God's power backs his word. So the spiritual warfare I'm talking about is both truth and power and counter knitting together. That Jesus is Lord. There is heaven, there is hell. There is eternity. Divine healing. Satan is real. Satan is real. My first, this is my third book, but my first book, I did a research and I could see that 14% of Americans admit the existence of Satan. 14% of Americans admit the existence of Satan. So Satan is real. Satan is real. 1 John 3, 8, John says, the one who began to sin is the devil. The reason why Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the enemy. He works. But our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and our Comforter, the Holy Spirit, worked more than Satan. Because Satan is part of creation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray right now, but before that, the four points that I would want to emphasize on it, that is worship, witness, warriors, and winners. I'm encouraging my community church, those of us who have received Holy baptism, to yearn for infilling fresh anointing daily, daily. It is not a certificate that you go to school and have PhD and have this and that's all. No, it is an ongoing. That is why religion, that is why religion is different. Christianity is not a religion. It's relationship. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Right now, your mortal being the temple of the Holy Spirit, and he dwells in you. Relationship. Then he, 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 he also overshadows you. He goes wherever you go. Where, wherever you go, you are mortal being the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I call myself a temple of the Holy Spirit and a carrier of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Brother John, you are a carrier of the Holy Spirit because wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is in you. You are, you are a carrier of God's power and God's authority and God's anointing and God's might. It is not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Says the Lord. Not by human things. That's why Paul says, when I, came, when I came to you, he was referring to Corinthians. But right now I'm referring to marriage community. As I have come to you, I'm, I'm not here with enticing words, with human persuasion. But I come to you in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and with power. So that your faith wouldn't rest in human beings. But your faith will rest in the power of God. Somebody give praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it enables us to become worshippers, true worshippers. We, we can't detach ourselves from God and worship him. No. There should be this. Connectivity. Connection. And God enables us. And without the power of the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be able to comprehend even who God is. I love to read this scripture because it's very appropriate. 
1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2. He talks about a unique thing there, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 14. He says, but as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man <coughs> which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. I love this, the last one, 14. But the natural man, the natural human being, does not re receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. As you're going to travel in prayer right now, I'm provoking your faith this hour. I'm provoking your faith. I would want you to experience the fire of God in a floody way, in an unprecedented, unprecedented way, so that things that are clumsy in the mortal being, the spiritual being, will purge out freely, give way for the Holy Spirit to have his own way in you and use you Excuse me to say, use this word, better. We want the Holy Spirit to use us better than what he's doing right now. Is that not so? Yes, we want him to use us more, more. Reach out, touch lives, break yokes, confront the enemy, crush weapons, subdue mountains, bring down strongholds, crashing and subduing mountains, annihilating darkness and the strongest of the enemy, and bringing the loss from the arena of Satan's sin and death to the marvelous kingdom of light and life. Jesus was a soul winner when, when he was on this earth. He was a soul winner. Soul winner. Spoke to so many people. People came to the saving knowledge of him. He was a warrior, and he's still a warrior. He's a winner, and we are also winners. So with this in mind, I'm provoking your faith this hour that you covet Holy Spirit baptism. If you have not as yet received Holy Spirit baptism, this is the hour. This is the hour. Let me give you my, my, my personal experience. When my pastor taught me, taught the church, that was a week-long revival about the Holy Spirit, that was 1993. And then three, I did not, I did not, I did not receive the Holy Spirit in the church, in the church service. But in my sleep, my wife woke me up, woke me up. I said, "Why?" He said, "You speaking in tongues?" <laughs> then I jumped from the bed, I shouted, and I took Bible right away. Don't broadcast. Early morning, standing in Lorry Parks, preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. So right now, you, if, you are not, if you are not able to receive Holy Baptism right here, covet it, desire for it, intentionally. Make that desperate intention that God, I need you. Because without you, I am nothing. Without you, I am hollow. Without you, I am weak. He says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the living God. And healings, healings are bonuses. They were part of the gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healings, miracles, prophecy, tongues, the of tongues, 
He's a man of spirit. And the other one. All these are gifts that God lavishes upon us. Then he lavishes the fruit of the spirit upon us. But the fruit of the spirit and also the gift of the spirit, we can use the gifts and the fruit accordingly if we experience Holy Spirit baptism. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. The things of the Spirit can be comprehended by people of the Spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit filled, Holy Spirit baptized, Holy Spirit empowered, born again believers like you and I. That's why in my book I made this as a, a Pentecostal perspective. The interpretation of Holy Spirit baptism, I know I schooled over here for seven years, Brother John knows. I was in the seminary, I taught in the seminary before I moved to Ghana. And uh, some lecturers teach about Holy Spirit, the watered down gospel. Water down. You water it down. But this is Pentecostal perspective. What happened? We have to replicate. Replicate. What happened in Acts chapter 2? Acts chapter 8? Acts chapter 10? Acts chapter 19? And also Azusa Street. What happened there? That is what we have to replicate. Ongoing tsunami of miracles. Then we invade wickedness. We invade evil. We invade powers of darkness. We destroy their plans. Then God's kingdom is established because wherever God's kingdom is established, then there is a warfare going on. And God forbid, Jesus never becomes defeated in any war. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public struggle over them, trampled over them by the cross. Even in the grave, the enemy could not defeat him. He couldn't, and he cannot. In the, the enemy could not defeat, the, defeat our Lord Jesus Christ in the grave. The enemy cannot never, never defeat you because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He empowers you, and you are joined hers with him as kingdom minded people. But he warns us. He warns us. He commands us. He implores us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be empowered with the Holy Spirit wherever we go 24 7. Not only Sunday. Not only Sunday. But 24 7 in your sleep. Then we become like we can say, as David said in Psalm 144, he said, Blessed be the Lord my God who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Spiritual battle. Spiritual warfare practices. All of it, we should practice spiritual warfare. And we can practice spiritual warfare when the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Because faith without works is dead. So if we say we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then we, the works of the Holy Spirit must be made manifest yeah. in our lives. Yeah. I want to pray with you. But the prayer that I want to, want to pray with you is that how many of us have not as yet received Holy Spirit baptism? If you have not as yet received Holy Spirit baptism, please come here, let me pray with you. Karakata. Zakata. Zakata. Copies of this book will help you. Put it in your library. Don't put it in the shelf, but this is handy. You can even fold it and put it in your bag. Study it. Read it to help you. Kabara, kabara. Those of you who have not received Holy Spirit, please come forward. Rakatara. If you are desperate for the Holy Spirit, come forward and pray with you. Santa kata kata kata. be. Thank you, Lord. I thank God all of us that have received Holy Spirit baptism. Then healings, who among us is ill? Jesus heals. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gift of healing. Jesus heals. Right now, this, I use it. I even I had wanted to throw it away. Then uh, uh, my, my, my eye specialist told me, uh, I have to keep it. 
because of sound. When I was here, Brother John knows and uh, Sister Tammy knows, I was using spectacle wherever I go. But right now, I drive to any place, I go to any place without spectacle. Jesus is a healer. He's yeah. the healer. He heals. He heals. If you need healing, come and pray with you. Kamburu Katawa. We're releasing God's healing power right now. You need healing, please come forward and pray with you. God's healing power. Jesus heals. And this is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if we say we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then there should be a manifestation of who he is. Rokita and Ababa. Ratara Rataba. Rokitaba Nerebo. Sundakaba. Boro and Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, in your name, I release. Your healing power. Yes, Lord. Your healing power upon your people, oh God. Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit right now. In the name, as above all names, Jesus Christ. Receive your healing right now. Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit right now. From the soul of the feet. Touch it. Embrace it. Possess it. Grab it. Take it. Receive it. Take it. Receive it. Take it. Receive it. Take it. In the name, as above all names. Receive your healing. Receive your healing by faith in Jesus Christ. Receive it. Possess it. It's yours. It's yours. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of the above all names, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I call it done. I call it done. Because we pray this prayer as a church, corporate prayer in the name of the above all names, Jesus Christ, in the power and mind and authority of the Holy Spirit. Somebody give praise in the house of the Lord. You can go sit down. You can go sit down. Have your seat. Those of you who, as our sister came here initially, those of you who feel shy even to communicate the good news to friends, you feel intimidated. Come let me pray with you. God has not given you the spirit of. Yes. Yes. Come, let me pray with you. God gives utterance. God gives utterance at a particular point in time. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Utterance. Utterance. The courage, the bravery. Yes, to launch into the deep. Let, let me also say this. Any, any, any born again believer who wants to experience Miracles, signs, and wonders should be a preacher, not a preacher in the church alone. Yeah. To witness Christ, wherever you go, witness Christ. Soul winning, communicate Christ. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Don't ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it, it is only the gospel that has power to save. Power to save is the gospel. Kaba, 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 kaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your name, Jesus, we pray, releasing your power again upon your people, O oh God. Yes, Lord, give your people the, the courage and the strength, the stamina, spiritual stamina, spiritual strength, spiritual braveness to go and to launch into the deep. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living, I discard the power that intimidates you you will never be intimidated again in the name of Jesus Christ. But receive the power, the power to witness Christ Jesus, the authority to witness Christ Jesus. Take it. Receive it. Take it. It's yours. Grab it. Take it. In the name, the Bible did. Take it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you please have your seat? Can you please have your seat? And the last prayer, exorcism. Yesterday, Pastor John and I were sharing some brothers, sisters go to Bible college, they graduate, but they, they, they didn't fear to cast out demons. Fear to cast out demons? Why? Because they've not recognized that there's, there is that supernatural power in them. We exorcise. Jesus exercised many times working out demons from human beings. 
Crocodile demons from human beings. Right now, if you don't have that courage to go to the offensive, I told you the gospel is very aggressive and confrontational. We launch into the deep and suppress the enemy. Retrieve people, souls and hearts from, from the enemy. Then we cast out demons from them and bring them to the fold of Christ so that Christ can use them appropriately. Thank you, Jesus. If you would want to experience that power, that's right. Remember, he says, but you shall receive power. Power to witness. Power to exercise. Power to worship. Power to be a winner. Power to be a warrior. Power to be, power to pray. Power to do everything that God enables us to do. Yes, authority and power and might to do whatever God, the Spirit, enables us to do. Exercise. Don't fear demons. Never fear them. They fear you because of what is in you. They fear you. Can all of us pray? Can all of us pray right now that God make me somebody who can exercise? Make me somebody who can cast out demons. Jesus Christ was troubled when he came from the mountain and saw Peter and others. They couldn't cast out a demon. Say, so why? You faithless people, why? Why? Until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, then Peter and others could cast out demons. Let's all pray for this. Yearn for this. Yearn for this. Cry for God. Cry to God right now. That God give me that enablement. Give me that strength. Give me that courage. Open up my spiritual eyes. Let me be someone, a child of yours, who is always burned to exercise, to deliver people from bondage, to crush the enemy, to subdue the enemy, and to annihilate darkness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, this is your church. This is your church. Jesus, my community church is yours. It's your bona fide property. Lord, I pray, releasing this gift, gift of miracles, gift of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healings, the cement of spirit, tongues, the vision of tongues, prophecy, and all the other gifts upon the church, upon every individual, in the name that's above all names, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray this, O oh God, that in no time, this auditorium, can't, can't accommodate members of my community church. Yes, Lord, as a child of yours, I made this, I made this prophetic declaration. The Lord, in no time, my community church has to find a larger place because this auditorium can't contain your church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father in heaven. Lord, I am yours. I am your servant. I am your servant. A man. A mere human being. I give you all the glory. Whatever I am able to do, whatever my community church is able to do, we do it in your power and in your name. So receive the glory. Yes. Receive the honor. And I pray, my God, giving you all the praise, giving you all the glory, for you deserve it. I am a man. You are God. You are sovereign. I'm a man. You are God. You are sovereign. I give you praise, my God, for who you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit.